ground, it's impossible to rise again. You are rising again. Now on today's message. God is not a racist. Please note. God is not a what? He said there's no difference between white and black. We are all the same. You can never be the best if you don't have the right information. Go for information. Today we'll be looking at God's word and the topic for this morning is be the best part one. Be the best part one. Be simply means to belong to the class of. There's what to be in life. Best means the greatest degree of good or excellence. So be the best simply we are talking about to attain a class of the greatest degree of excellence that is what singling you out. And I decree in the midst of the crowd, God will single you out. Yeah. But hear this and hear me well. Your decisions and actions today is what will determine where you will be tomorrow. And the most complicated thing in life is alternatives. Is what? It's alternatives. To be the best, you must know what is the right decision you must take. Because you are a sum total of decisions you have taken in the past. And you are exactly what you decide. But when you know what benefits you, it is easy to take the right decision. This is why many people cannot decide on something because they don't really know what benefits them. And it's difficult to say, okay, this is what I want to do. It is when you know, now for instance, now a young lady, two young men come to you and they're at the same church, two of them go to church, they're members of the church, and they say two of them at the same time, pick up phone or see you physical as I want to marry you. How do you know who is the right one? They give you a job, and then one is promising you that the package of overseas, everything, that one is telling you to, you may be confused. It is the amount of information that you have that I mean how you know which one to decide for. Not every open door is God's door. There are some open doors that have kept people in trap. So the right decision is taken when a man knows what will benefit him more. So I hear. Because it is hard to take a decision when you don't know what your values are. But if you know what your values are, it is very easy. And if you have the right information, it is very easy. Easy to know what to do. Because by then you know how to identify with what you really want in life. There are life questions you need to answer before I go further. Life questions to answer. These are life questions. Because if you don't answer them, you may not know what to do. One, what is my purpose and why am I here? Why are you here and what is your purpose? Why are you here? I don't mean church. Why are you on earth? Oh, you are just here. You know, when we were small, my father used to play one funny music by Jim Reeves. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Heaven is my home. <laughs> and he would be drinking beer and be playing it. <laughs> and they know the man died in crash. Because he said, this world is not his home. He, the purpose, you must be known. Purpose is what? Number two, what is my vision and where am I going? What is my what? And where am I? If you don't have a vision, you will just be full of confusion and distraction. Where am I really going? Where are you going in life? These are questions you ask yourself and answer them. Number three, what is my mission? And how will I get there? Many confuse vision and mission. <laughs> they, don't, they don't even know the two. What is my mission? And how will I get there? Vision is a fold of God's plan. But mission is different. Number four, 
What are my values and how will I explain them? En route. What are my values? What are my what? And how will I explain them? Now hear this. We'll be answering these questions as we go by. God wants us to be the best. Hear this and hear me well. God made no provision for any of us to be average. <laughs> Is that funny? You know, when you go to school, they have excellent, very good, good, the average. But in the syllabus of God, he never made provision for average. So to be average is an anathema. It's against scriptures. No, I'm an average person. No, it's not correct. In Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 13, we are going to read responsibly together, all of us. Shall we read together? Want to go? And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shall be what? Stop there. See above. He said only, no option. It didn't say that shall be above sometimes. Say only, I'm not giving you an option. Either you're above or forget it. And I pray that you, before this day is over, you will hit the best in the name of Jesus. But hear this and hear me well. No matter your background, you can be the best. No matter the background you have. No matter where you're coming from, you can be the best as possible. A man called Paul in the Bible had a very rough background. In modern time, he can be regarded as a militant. In today's time, he was a militant. Paul was a militant, but very intelligent. Was an intellectual man. But he was very rough. Very rough. But rose to be one of the greatest apostles of his time. So your background does not matter in case you came from a funny background. A man called Peter was an illiterate. Peter did not go to school. He was a shrewd fisherman. But in Acts chapter 4 verse 13, the Bible said they marveled when they saw that they were ignorant men. They were what? Ignorant men, but had knowledge. He became one of the greatest apostles that we are still talking about till today. His background was what? Illiterate. He didn't go to school. He was not the poet of Peter and the pastor. They were unlearned and ignorant men. Means they were not educated. Yet he rose to be the best. A man called Abraham. Abraham's father happens to be a witch doctor. Came from a pagan background. Oh, my father did not go to church. It's irrelevant. And Abraham rose. We're still talking about the sons and daughters of Abraham. And he rose to be the best. So maybe you came from a background where your people don't go to church. That shouldn't stop you. So you can't stop me. Abraham to today, we are referring to him as a father of nations. We'll be looking at keys to be the best. Keys to be the what? Because it's not enough to say, I'll be the best, I'll be the best, I'll be the best. It's not something you just confess without understanding what to do to be the best. Please, I'm going to teach very practical teaching. Keys to be the best. Jesus said, I give unto you the keys. The keys what? Of heaven and of earth. So, there are keys that will determine how far you go. He said, I give unto you the keys. Plural, the keys. Do you have any? Of the kingdom of heaven. There are keys that will determine how you become the best. No man becomes the best just wishing. Otherwise, everybody would have been the best. Let me say this to you, people of God. Many have mistaken two things. Because they've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they believe everything will just work like that. No. The person of Jesus guarantees your heaven. But his principles guarantees your success on earth. Do you know if you're carnally minded, you still make heaven. But if you're carnally minded, you fail on earth. A carnal man can still go to heaven. But a carnal man can't succeed here. He will suffer like suffer head. A carnal man can accept Christ and refuse to renew his mind. I will still go to heaven. But he will die here like Lazarus. That will not be a portion. Keys 
to be the best. Number one key to be the best is quality information. Quality what? Information. The quality of information you possess will determine how far you will go in life. Information is the bedrock of every transformed life. Let me say this to you. There is no substitute for information in your quest for a change of position. It's important that you keep getting the right information consistently and continually. Because in life, what you hear will determine how you think. If you see a man thinking, it's based on what he or she has heard. And how you think will determine how you behave. How you behave will determine what you become. So before you say, I want to become this, the foundation starts with the kind of information you get. Right, listen carefully. When you see a man behaving poor, he has heard something about poverty. The poverty makes him to think poverty. So he now behaves poverty and then he becomes a poor man. When you see a man who may not have physical cash, but is able to get information about wealth and he begins to think wealth, he begins to be like a rich man, he will end up being rich. When you see a man who has had information about how to beat a wife, he will begin to think on how to beat his wife and then from there he will behave like a wife beater and will end up in divorce. So it is not the divorce he will be fighting first. He has to fight first the information he got. So without a proper information, no matter you tell him don't divorce, don't beat your wife, it won't work. You can't change a poor man's mentality until you look at where the information is coming from. You can never be the best if you don't have the right information. Because every destiny is at the mercy of information. A young man that I talked about him, Jesse Owens. Jesse Owens was in school when his sports coach told him four things as information. He said, do you want to be a great sports star? There are four things that make you great. It's a determination, dedication, attitude, and discipline. These four things the young man had was what shaped his life to become the first man to win four gold medals in Olympics. Just one information. Keep pace with current information. Keep pace with current information. You cannot have an obsolete information and expect to produce any current results. No. Uh, some of you, the information you have is outdated. Is what? Outdated. And many don't have regard for information because of tradition. We are so fixed like concrete. We are fixed with tradition. So even when we see something better, we, we, we block our mind from accepting information. And hear this truth? When they stop learning, no matter your age, you are old. You can be 20 and be old with the moment you stop learning. You are not old because of chronological age. The moment a man stops learning, old age has started. And there are men who are 80 who are very young in their minds. May God give you understanding. Information brought me out of poverty. Brought me out of what? Just information. All that brought me out of poverty is information. I knew something that made me know that I can never be poor. He said, those who do know their God, they shall be strong and do what? Those who do know, not those who do come. Those who do know, Daniel 11, 32b. Just information brought me out of poverty. I, mean, I was in abject poverty. And I got deep information of covenant wealth. That brought me out. Somebody is coming out in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Go for information. Anything you are doing in life, you must have what? Information. You must have what? Information. Anything you are doing, you are a designer, be correct. You are a lawyer, be correct. You are a medical doctor, be correct. You are a teacher, be what? If I speak with you for five minutes, I will know whether you are correct in your field or not. There are teachers 
who are still teaching with information of three years ago when the world has shifted. The economists today who have first class in economics who are still thinking to solve problems of their nations with information of yesterday. So they can't provide solutions to the challenges of their nations. They made first class. Because the information they have is obsolete. I said something. I said the world has moved. From agriculture, they moved to industrialization. From industrialization, the world today right now is knowledge and technology. Information not updated will be obsolete. So change is always proportionate to what? Information. If I want to be the best, my information too will also be current. Hear this and hear me well. Do not expect to be the best if you are unwilling to pursue relevant information in your specific field. You can never be the best in any field if you are unwilling to pursue relevant information. Every second you will be updating. Every second you will be what? Updating every second because what if information of yesterday is not information of today? As simple as carpentry, they used to use saw. Do they use saw today? If you use saw today, you will not be able to finish one job. And then now, you can imagine a carpenter still carrying saw in a bag in this world. They used to use screw, now they use machine. Shame, shame. Can imagine a furniture man still using. Square, square, what do you call it? Star screw. Take a decision by placing value on your life and say, enough. Even politics, you need information. There are politicians today, today, who don't know anything happening in the world. That is anything. You tell them, you know, in China, this is a political system. In America, the Republicans and the Democrats, this and, they just look at you like this. They cannot give one speech and quote and make reference to a former politician. Don't go away. David Biomi will be right back. Success is a journey, not a destination. Your limitation is only your imagination. Find the secrets to David Biomi's successes in these books. Unlimited success, lasting exploits, touch of excellence, strategies for winning, master strokes for winning. Be the best, the power of change for success, positioning for success. See you at the top, destined for success. Keys to the top, succeeding with challenge, courage to possess your possession, making your future work time make news to order online visit smhos.org forward slash store or call these numbers plus two three four seven zero three eight nine four five seven one four or plus two three four eight zero nine five two one six four double six or via email knowledge at smhos.org that will make you the best love for your assignment love for your what love for your assignment you can only be the best when you love what you do have you ever woken up Monday morning and you don't feel like going to work. How I many of you have experienced this sincere to yourself? How I many of you have experienced it? Let me see your hand. You woke up Monday morning. Every zeal in you died. Can I tell you the truth? You will never be the best in that field. Because that job, you don't love it. You only have money for stomach, but you will never be the best. Anything you do that Monday morning makes you boring shows that you are not in the right place. When you are in the right place, Monday and Friday makes no difference. You don't love that job. You are only doing that job for stomach sake. Now, hear the truth? You may not be the most qualified, but your love 
for your assignment will make you the best, even if you are not qualified. Jesus, for instance, stayed for 30 years. For how many years? Many don't know how Jesus became the best. He loved what he was doing. He said, I love my assignment. He said, I must work. He loved the assignment. For 30 years, nobody knew Jesus. They call him the son of the carpenter. They call, they call him Jesus the carpenter. The carpenter. The carpenter. But in three years, because of the love for the assignment, he became the best. Is that true? Moses prepared for 80 years. And the world is talking about Moses. When a man loves assignment, it may take him time. But when he comes out, you come out as the best. You come out as the best. Because those who love the assignment are focused. They are never distracted. He said, one thing I do, but I can't myself not to apprehend it, but this one thing I do, I'm focused. Paul was speaking, Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Reaching for the list that before, I press towards the mark of the high color of God in Christ Jesus. Let's read Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 10. Shall we read the A part together? One, two, go. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with what? Anything you are doing, do it with everything inside you. Because love for your assignment will make you creative, it will make you innovative. It will make you the best come out of you. When you love what you're doing, every day you are thinking of a new way of doing it. Let me say this to you. Your love for your assignment will be revealed by the things you do daily. The kind of things you do daily will reveal whether you love what you're doing or not. And it is the love for your assignment that will determine the level of success for that assignment. I pray you will succeed. Amen. But let me say this. Many are not at their best in their assignment. You know the reason? Hmm? Instead of love for their assignment, what they love is reward. So the best in them never come out. Many people, why the best can come out in the assignment is because instead of love for the assignment, the end, everything they're looking for is how much, how much, how much, how much, how much, how much will they pay me? How much will I get? So the man ends up useless and average. He doesn't love the thing, he loves just the money. He doesn't love the job, he loves only money. Such person will never be the best. Does Ronaldo love football? Hmm? Money was not his first target. If money is his first target, Ronaldo would have gone to China like Oscar. You see the love for assignment? Oscar and Ronaldo is well paid more. Ronaldo. Messi. And Oscar, who is paid more? Messi. They love football. They love it. So they put their best. They are highly paid. True? But the ones who love money have gone to China and they are not in their best. Now listen, because those ones are after what? Money. They don't love the assignment. When you love the assignment, it becomes so creative. Because what? Creative. If you watch every day, these people are thinking of a new way to play the football. They every day they love what they do. So today, if you see free kick, the next day you see another style, they every day love, and then they pay them based on that. Don't go for money, brother. It will destroy the best in you. Go for a love for the money is only a reward. Join us next time on Our Salvation. You are God's most prized possession. Your worth to Him is incomparable. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not the sin, not the pain, not your shame. Jesus says, All that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. John chapter 6 verse 37 God is waiting for you with open arms. Come to Him as you are. He will give you life, freedom, 
peace, transformation. Wherever you are, pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the dead to save me. Now with my mouth, I declare you Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Imagine what the human race would be like without social interactions. No talking, no communication. Just everyone leading a solitary life. Now visualize a world where love forms the basis of interactions. Shared laughter, memories and value. Salvation Ministries introduces Getter Connect, a fast, convenient and simple way to communicate with those whom you love. Keep in touch with friends and family. Connect with your colleagues and business partners. Stay updated on latest information and trends. Your social networks all in one. Head over to Google Play Store or App Store to download. Also available on the web at www.getterconnect.com. Get a connect. Spreading love and value through words. Join us next time on Hour of Salvation with David Iomi. This message was brought to you by Salvation Ministries, home of success.